I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to make paper mache briquettes as fire starters for my grill. Now, to give you a little brief introduction, I made these, got a bunch of these. I made these out of the papers that we get in the mail. This stuff, the ads that you get in your mailbox every week. You make these up and then I let these dry out. It takes a week or two and then I melt some wax and paraffin in a little skillet that I set aside just for that purpose. I usually do it when I'm out at the grill. I use the heat from the grill and then I put the briquette in the wax to soak up the melted wax. This is a great fire starter to get my wood started for my grill. But when I was doing some research for this, I saw that some people use this stuff. Cardboard, corrugated cardboard. I want to try that. I see what it's going to be like. You know, the boxes you get your Amazon stuff from in, in the mail when it, when it arrives. But I do have to say, I have to preface this by saying that eh, I'm going to be using some slightly more modern technology than, say, the people in third world countries use. For example, I have a paper shredder, a nice one. It'll take like 14 or 18 sheets of paper at a time. I don't force that much through it. But I can cut the cardboard into strips and put that through one layer at a time, one piece at a time through the shredder. And it shreds more like a confetti, not long strings. And that's what this is. This is a box, a bag of my shredded cardboard. I'm going to use this today to make my briquettes along with some other more modern technology. Well, you'll see what I mean. Let's make some charcoal starter briquettes. Got a three gallon-ish bucket here. And I'm very carefully going to put my shredded cardboard in so I don't end up with confetti all over my kitchen. And just to give you an idea what I've got here, see this is what it is. It's shredded more in these little particles rather than strong long strings like some um, shredders do. All right, and then I'm going to add enough water to this to get this to really soak well. Got the water in there until it came up to where it started to cover this paper, right? And then you want to check this once in a while because as that paper absorbs water, um, that water level could go down. And then the paper up top um, might not get wet enough, but this should be okay. I'm going to let this sit now for two or three hours. Um, I could go overnight. It doesn't really matter, especially with the process I use. My cardboard pieces now have been soaking in water for a while. And they smell like wet cardboard. Okay, the next thing to do is to kind of mulch this stuff up. And I've seen different contraptions. Some people will get a paint stirrer that they can attach to an electric drill. They put a, a blade on the end and they go in there with the paint stirrer and they break all this up. Well, there's an easier way. Um, as I said, modern technology. I have one of these. Yeah, it's a blender jar. Um, <laughs> This came with my, my Vitamix. And this one, it's labeled on here. This is for using to grind up grains, like grinding up wheat berries into um, whole wheat flour. I don't eat grains. I'm on a keto diet. But this works really well to mulch this stuff up. So let me show you. Okay, so the first thing to do is... Not making too much of a mess. It is kind of messy. That's where I'm wearing this blue apron. I don't wear this blue apron in my cooking um, videos because if I mess it up, who cares? This isn't one of my nice show aprons. So I'm going to put some of my paper in there, like so, maybe half full. And then I'm going to add water to this. Put that on my blender. Okay, you don't need much to do this. So, that's 
it's a jet. Turn it on. Just gonna go to number one. And let that blend for just a little bit. It's just mulching that up, breaking it up. I don't need to get this down to a puree. All right, turn that off. And then have a bowl set aside. And I'm gonna pour this into this bowl. See, that's kind of gloopy, sloppy. I can see some of the whole pieces, but it's also broken up quite a bit. All right, I'm gonna do a few more of these and then we'll, I'll show you the next step. What I have here is a potato ricer. I mean, guys, you might want to do this when your wife isn't home and then, you know, just tell her afterwards, oh yeah, I, I mulched up all those paper, paper stuff and I made some briquettes. I'm gonna put your paper, pulped paper in there. Get it maybe half full. And then I got the smallest screen in the bottom and then just squeeze out the water. Some's going to come out the bottom, some is going to come out the top. Make sure you press that well. Squeeze the water out. Okay. Push it out from underneath. And then what you have is a wet briquette. I put that on a cooling rack. Call it a drying rack at this point. And then I'm going to shape up as many as I can to fill this rack. And then we'll explain the next step. So there they are. I got 27 plus this little thin one over here. Almost 28 out of that bag of shredded cardboard. I'm going to place these outside on my porch and then just let them sit outside for two, maybe even three weeks until they feel thoroughly dry. Now, to be honest, is it necessary that I make my own briquettes? No, certainly not. I can walk up the street here to Home Depot and buy some Weber starter cubes. These will last me longer than a box of these will. And then one thing I like about these is they burn an awful long time. There's enough fuel in them. They burn for so long that it's enough to get hard wood like oak really burning before these briquettes burn out. So I like them. To me, it's a fun sort of a pastime thing to do, but really it's not not completely necessary, but I enjoy making them. Now, as I mentioned, these are going to have to sit outside for two or three weeks before they fully dry out. And then again, like I said in the introduction, I melt some paraffin in a little skillet that I have just for that purpose. Put the dry briquette in there, let it soak a little bit, turn it over, let it soak until it's thoroughly saturated with melted wax. Set it aside to cool. I'll do a half dozen, a dozen of those at a time and then I have them ready outside when I'm ready to do any grilling. So that's my little project for today. Hopefully um, you weren't bored to tears by it. Something I enjoy doing.